This is the second of the special messages I promised that would be coming out periodically from Washington to our state and tribal delegates. As you know, Map 21 has been the subject of a lot of discussion since it was passed by Congress earlier this year. In the last two weeks, the Federal Transit Administration has been putting out guidances and discussions and numbers all dealing with the implementation of MAP 21. There are many aspects of that legislation that are important and vital to community and public transportation. But one facet of the bill is very unique and very important. That is the section that deals with safety. This administration, especially our transportation secretary, have been very vigorous advocates for improving the safety of all forms of transportation, whether that's in the trucking area or whether that's in rail or in transit. The provisions of safety in this bill make it a high priority for community and public transportation. Even though we have an extremely good safety record, all of us need to be concerned about enhancing safety in the future. In many respects, I might call MAP 21 our safety bill. And in that regard, it does have new requirements for transportation organizations and agencies of all sizes to better manage their safety procedures. Our association has been working on the safety issue for a decade. We've enjoyed a cooperative relationship with the Federal Transit Administration under a cooperative agreement in which we and APTA and AASHTO have worked together to develop safety programs that are suitable to federal ideas and regulations. Not long after the passage of MAP 21, I met with Administrator Rogoff to discuss safety and how our current activities will fit into this new safety requirement as it develops at the FTA. I was assured that the cooperation we have enjoyed under that current memorandum of understanding will continue and many of the activities that we've developed as well as those developed by our partners will be acceptable means of meeting the safety goals of the Federal Transit Administration. If you visit our website at www.ctaa.org you can look for the wide range of safety activities that we sponsor that will meet these new and continuing requirements. As you know, we have a safety certification program for an entire community or public transit organization. We have special safety training for those who are in maintenance areas as well as in those who are supervisors in the safety area. Our PASS program, which provides safety education and safety techniques for those who provide services for people covered by the American Disability Act, is among the finest programs of its kind in the nation. In the last several years, we've been able to enhance that program in particular by creating an online training and certification program that is an extremely reasonable way to meet the requirements of safety services to these important riders of community and public transportation. Your association has developed tools that can help you and all of our members be ready for the changes that will be coming because of MAP 21 and also help you by raising your own standards for the way your operations manage risk and safety that in the end do more than just help you meet requirements. It will help you get better rates on insurance and lower the kind of risk factors that insurance companies use when they determine how much to charge you for the protection that they provide. So I want to encourage all of you 
to take a few minutes and visit our safety and training sections of our website that are found at www.ctaa.org. At our last board meeting last month, the board of directors of the association founded a new committee that will function as the Community Transportation Safety Council to help us work with the FTA and to develop new ways that we can provide cost-effective and reasonable ways to help you implement the new standards that will be forthcoming now and in the future. So by working together, I am sure that we can keep safety as a priority and keep it as a very reasonable cost for you and all of our members. Charles Dixon in our organization that all of you know heads up our national programs that deal with the safety area and Len Cahill of our organization is in charge of the training that's associated with these efforts. I want you to feel free to contact either of them for help or information or to express your concerns and ideas about these efforts as they develop. Each of them can be found on the website and each of them is accessible to you to help you as well as to hear from you about ideas you might have. You might remember that in my first message not long ago, I mentioned that we were approaching the election. Today, the election is less than three weeks away. In Map 21, the people who are elected in these elections will determine its future. Since we only have a two-year bill, those who come to Washington as new members of Congress or those who come as returning members will decide what our future transportation policy and investments will be. So in the short time frame work that's left between now and Election Day, I hope that all of you have been reaching out to these candidates to talk to them about the important work that you do on behalf of the communities you serve and those that are served by all of our members within the states you represent. Following the election is when the real work begins, when all of you and our, all of our members should attempt to meet with those that are elected and re-elected to remind them the important work that you play in providing important services to people in the place you called home, especially as we struggle to get people to work and to get to basic health care. So that's a second reminder I have for you today. We must always educate people about the good work that we're doing, and this isn't a bad time to educate them as well about your history of safety in serving people that make what we do so important. So don't forget to take a look at www.ctaa.org for our safety information, as well as updates on the legislative process that will be beginning. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me directly at any time. I'm available through the website too, but I'm always available to you through my email at marsico, M-A-R-S-I-C-O, at C-T-A-A dot O-R-G. Have a great weekend, and I look forward to hearing from you soon, and take a look at that safety information we have. Good luck, and have, again, a great weekend.